Hey guys, what's going on? It's Wrecked Capital. Welcome back to the Wrecked Capital channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Today we're going to be focusing on the accumulation schematic for the Wachovian viewpoint because of course in last week's video we spoke about the distribution and now people are talking about, well, is there now an accumulation here for Bitcoin? And are we going to see a trend reversal towards the upside? And I'm going to share with you my thoughts and what I think could be happening, as well as how I'm thinking about the Wachovian distribution, as well as the accumulation. So here's a chart that a follower shared with me. And of course, guys, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. And let's dive right into the video. Here's a chart that a follower shared with me, and I'm not really sure whose chart this is. This is an interesting encapsulation of generally what people are, might be thinking about right now. And whether or not this schematic is true or not, or ever, whether it's actually drawn correctly relative to the actual accumulation schematic is beyond the scope of this video because this is a schematic on the one hourly time frame and when you focus on the distribution schematic for Bitcoin right over here you can see that it takes well let's actually go to the uh, chart right over here you can see that this is a daily time frame this is a daily time frame and you have a multi-week consolidation period right over here, a curling down in price action before seeing a breakdown. So this actually takes from mid-February, even a little bit earlier than that, until mid-May for this entire consolidation range to actually break down. So we're looking at this distribution range, this Wachovian schematic it has taken a few months, in fact, for this distribution range to actually manifest and, and translate itself into price. Whereas over here, we're looking at the one hour for an accumulation range, and it's just a, it's very different because the time frames are different and, and when it comes to the distribution schematic, it's on a period of months, weeks. Here, we're looking at hours, and it's a very different, time frame and it also means that we can't really focus on you know distribution and while we're still potentially in the distribution phase of the Wachovian distribution schematic we're probably in these phases somewhere whereabouts so it's still part of that distribution so we can't be talking about now accumulation and on lower time frames it's it just doesn't work that way. We have to have the similar time frame versus the similar time frame rather than weeks and months versus hours. So here's a chart that I was talking about last week. This being the distribution range, this being the breakdown from here. And now we're in this period of price action where we're currently going to be recovering in the short term. And this is where I believe we are. Some people disagree with that. Some people think we are in phase E before the next major drop. We can talk about that in a separate video in a bit more detail about the differences between these two phases. I feel like we're currently uh, going to be forming a structure over here before breaking out towards the very bottom of this distribution range just to turn it into a new resistance, it being previous support for many, many months, weeks, and now it's probably gonna be a resistance. But I'm actually gonna share my view in a little while because just on the back of that distribution range, distribution occurs when we're overbought. And of course, we have to break down when the supply is greater than the demand for a call off period and then you see a markdown where we see extensive price action. So during this entire period, if you're just looking at the price action over here, this is the overbought period, right? Where price can't go any higher. It's in the overbought period. And then we're actually losing to the bears because supply is greater than demand. So the bears are stronger than the bulls and we actually break down. So we're probably somewhere around this area through the lens of the wick off price cycle before a significant mar significant markdown but we can't be talking about suddenly an accumulation area on the one hour because we're still in the process of this distribution arguably so we can't suddenly after many many weeks now take a uh, total u-turn quite literally here's a u-turn and just you know we're now suddenly oversold 
and in an accumulation area on the one hour time frame. It's just not, it just doesn't work that way when it comes to comparing the time frames. It takes a while for the distribution to actually occur and it will take a while for that distribution to actually happen. And then once we have a significant markdown, that's when we could start talking about higher time frame accumulation. But talking about one hour accumulation is a little bit premature at this point in time. And when it comes to actually this markdown, what my thoughts are at this point in time where we're suddenly, we're suddenly seeing a bit of a markdown, we've broken down. I spoke about this in a previous video last week. I feel like we might, and this is actually historically by standards of history, we've seen this phase occur where we thought we actually form lower highs and lower lows. But instead of breaking down to lower levels, we actually break back into the range. And that's a scenario that I'm going to be watching for because this is now a nice wedging structure. We're breaking out from here, in fact. And I've mentioned this on my Twitter. We're breaking out from here and it's important to break past the 39 region because that would open up a rally towards the bottom of this distribution range, which is really the most important price uh, portion of price action price level to really focus on because if we get a strong rejection from here, we probably will. But what about the second rejection after that first rejection? Will we actually see sellers lose sell side pressure and strength here? And will we actually break back into this range? That's something I'm going to be watching out for. So if you look at the wick off logic, you know, a higher time frame accumulation phase occurs, then we see a significant markup and we've seen that significant markup for Bitcoin over the past few months, pretty much all this year and a great portion of last year before reaching the buying climax, entering a distribution range, which is also going to take multiple weeks and months as we've seen right over here, this being from mid February to mid May. And now we see a breakout, of course, failed rally, fake, fake breakouts, and then a breakdown from the range. And now we're in this period, right? And a lot of people are actually talking about this current rally being low volume. And that seems to go well quite nicely with Wickoff logic through the lens of, you know, this just being a low volume relief rally, just to test the bottom of the distribution range into a new resistance before rejecting to lower levels for a tremendous markdown. So this low volume rally, if that volume doesn't improve, then of course that low volume may only be enough to press price up towards this key region and just get rejected there as per the wick of logic right over here. So my thesis overall is that we're not going to see this entire wick off distribution range play out. Historically, whenever we see a uh, wick off distribution range, we tend to test the bottom of this distribution range and just invalidate it, not get rejected too strongly before breaking back into it. So that's what I'm thinking about. Even though we might be in this phase and even though this might be a low volume rally, yes, really important to see that confirmed here. This is the most important region the bottom of the distribution range. This is the most important region. And if we can break past there, then that entire wick off distribution range uh, thesis is out the window and we've broken back in to the range once again, because historically this actually tends to happen quite a lot. So even though this is low volume, a low volume rally, potentially really important to just watch out for this area and see how it ho holds. But we're still in this distribution portion and we can't talk about accumulation on the lower timeframes because distribution takes weeks to build up, weeks to play out, and so does accumulation. So speaking about accumulation on the hourly timeframe seems a bit too premature, especially since we're still in the distribution phase on the higher timeframe. So let's focus on some of the key things to watch out for going forward. Well, this is the long-term gauge of investor sentiment, so the 200 EMA, and this is a great graphical representation of how people think about Bitcoin. If it's, you know, if the price action is below this EMA, investors are bearish on Bitcoin. If it's above it, investors are bullish. But the thing about this we have to know is that this is also the 50 EMA and we're actually getting, we're potentially on the cusp of a crossover. And if we indeed 
see a low volume rally right over here, get rejected over here, and then pull back, then that's probably going to be in line with Wyckoff logic. And that would tie in very nicely with what is essentially a potential death cross looming set to occur mid-June. And of course, if we just continue to consolidate at these lower price levels and fail to break out substantially, then these EMAs are going to continue to converge like so. And historically, we tend to see these convergence in the death cross EMAs. You know, that tends to happen 100 to 150 days. Uh, historically speaking, which would bring us to late July or early September. But if we actually see, because th this convergence is happening happening at a very rapid rate, if this rapid rate continues, then we'll see that death cross happen much sooner. So it's really important, not just for bull market's sake, but also for Wickoff's sake in a sense, because we need to see a strong reaction and just to invalidate this region as a resistance and turn it into support for us to rally towards the upside for history to repeat itself because Wickoff distribution range ranges never fully play out. We always see Bitcoin uh, invalidate that range with a break back in here. And a break back in here would invalidate the Wickoff logic, but also invalidate the death cross. So what we're seeing from Bitcoin right here, even though it's low volume, it's still very positive because we're starting to see even this 50 EMA slightly start to curl up. And it's only been a small increase in price action so far, but based on the chart that I shared a few days ago about the death cross, uh, you can see that it's a downtrending trajectory. It's pretty much just dropping heavily, right? And today we're already seeing with this small increase in price action most recently, we're already seeing a small adjustment towards the upside, just a little bit of a curl up rather than a stone cold dropping uh, momentum behind there. But we need so much more for this death cross to be invalidated and be avoided. So that's something I'm going to be watching for because the wick off, if the wick off schematic is right, then we're gonna see the death cross uh, occur later on uh, in the next few weeks. But if history repeats itself and Bitcoin is able to invalidate the wick off distribution schematic as it has many times in the past before, then this death cross won't happen and will resume the bull market going forward. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. I'm Rekt Capital. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'll speak to you in the next one. Speak to you soon.